Sir, let's go. Crazy. A little scary. a parolee on foot. They're both down. He said, yeah, terrorist, go to hell. The rhythm along Fifth Avenue on St. Patrick's Day is both orderly and lively. Left, right, left. <laughs> yes, boss queen, work! New York City has always kind of been the king of weird. And close. Definitely not a normal movie. Anything pretty much goes here. We have a great group. We have a lot of fun. We try to be as screen accurate as we can possibly be. It's where people can come and celebrate themselves. A lot of times when you think of an interactive show, you think of not. There is something fun about everybody swiping and occasionally cursing when it didn't work. I'm Thomas McKeon, and I have the privilege of being a native New Yorker. I always say, they let me stay. <laughs> well, I'm an artist. It kind of gives them this mystical quality. would have no idea it was made from Metro cards. Three, set, off. All of us know that being a police officer is not just a job. It is a true calling. It's beautiful seeing all these people come out to bring awareness to a really, really important cause. Whether they were opponents of Donald Trump, let's go, Trump 24, or supporters, Trump 24, Trump 24, Trump 24, Trump 24, Trump 24. I said, oh my God, this gentleman's holding a shotgun to his head. We're panicking. No, this right here, I didn't do nothing. You didn't do anything? I didn't commit no murder. Well, it's pretty slippery, no matter where you're going. We came in the morning, it was a river on Jerome Avenue. So I wake up in the morning and we come over here to go see how the cars are and then we see this tree with all of my, in my car. This was not the sound that people all over New York City wanted to hear. Yeah, it's hot out here. My bra was wet. That, that's how I know it's hot. As flames chew through terrain inch by inch, the Butte fire continues to burn. Have you found anybody alive up there that stayed back? Get a line back here. Get a line back here. Broad daylight, Broadway, and Myrtle. A man lights up and begins smoking. Less than 30 seconds later, he stumbles right into our news van. He keeps going, but he doesn't make it far. He collapses, begins nodding off and twitching before he finally passed out. Not only did this happen in front of our camera, it happened with police just a few feet away. They responded quickly. Oh, man. You awake? Hey. Listen, as they did all they could to help him. You awake? Papa, just open your eyes for me, okay? Can you open your eyes? Until the ambulance arrived. People in this neighborhood are tired of seeing scenes like this unfold right in front of them. About an hour after that man OD'd, Go get our hood! 
activists hit the ground here fed up. No K2 in our hood. No K2. They put red X's on the doors of delis that have been accused of selling K2 in the past. When they got to the big boy deli at the heart of the crisis, Myrtle and Broadway. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. They sat down and blocked the entrance chanting until they were taken away in handcuffs. The owner of the big boy deli told PIX11 his business is not responsible for the current crisis. We're not selling K2. Okay. All right. They came in here, they searched it for two days, and they didn't find nothing. Well, I heard boom, boom, boom. He hit three cars because he couldn't stop. I guess he was down. He just went out of control. He went over the ledge. It sounded like thunder. Sound like complete thunder. Like, like I said, I'm still trembling. Like, it was like something out of a movie. With every camera focused on the Union City garbage truck that careened 15 feet down onto 495 just outside the Lincoln Tunnel. Amazingly, it didn't land on one of the thousands of cars in the New Jersey bound side escaping the city for 4th of July. But debris did spray across at least two vehicles. One of those pipes that was on the truck slid off and hit a bus what service that was going on. I don't know where they were going. The path of destruction actually began along 30th Street in front of a Union City post office. The garbage truck seemed to lose control and slam into several cars before taking out a traffic light and small clock tower, which stopped at about 1256, almost exactly when the 911 call started. There's no way he should have been going that fast, you know what I mean? So I don't know if he got maybe lost lost like consciousness and maybe his foot hit the, hit the gas or something to that nature. And then he came through, he cut over, knocked over the sign, and just plowed down, just right through the gate. I just came here to see what was going on. Yeah, she's popular. People love her, and she's kind of become a Park Slope mascot. Penny's been painting a couple months now. He doesn't use brushes. She took to it really fast, and she's a natural. She's a natural artist. Well, I think she goes with the flow. It's a freestyle, if anything. <laughs> This is one of Penny's paintings. It's multi-layer. Definitely abstract. She got it all figurative. She's interpretive. It's so funny. <laughs> Set up the canvas. She usually goes off the oats, and once she fills the paint, it's like it's like the mud, and she goes with the flow. An animal version of Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Penny loves wagging her tail. She will sometimes wag her tail while she paints. Wow, I just think it's amazing. <laughs> it's a little bit incredible that a pig can paint. There's a pig! How she mixes it is how it comes out. Her name's Penny. She doesn't always cooperate, but she's a real artist. You know, she needs the inspiration to strike. Penny! Oh, her nose is wet. Category of snout art. <laughs> this is the most Brooklyn story I could ever hope to write. I'm actively writing a picture book about her. Penny's in there. Yeah, Penny's in there. <laughs> community lover. There is. She's bringing the community joy. I never see a, uh, a pig paint before. Wow, look how beautiful. They are for sale, yeah. Um, she did a limited series of 13. That was her first series of paintings. You can DM her at Fire Pig Penny, and she uh, she takes commissions. Oh, look, 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 look. Yeah, only in Brooklyn. Only in New York. There is a lot going on along Canal Street. Everybody's rubbernecking. Everybody's turning around to see what, what's going on. Apart from uh, crowded, <laughs> that's different. It's noisy. It's busy. And everybody has something to say about it. It doesn't seem like a problem to me. It's just like a funky area. It's New York. What can you do? Tell all that to the New York City Department of Transportation. The survey is titled Canal Street Visioning, and officials want to know about pedestrian and transportation issues to better understand the experience of traveling here. That's a run-on question, baby. Which part of that you want me to answer first? <laughs> Why am I here in New York City, born and raised? Alicia has a few comments for the record. New York City literally is the only place that is just that, New York City. You can be as grumpy as you like, and it's going to be okay, because that's just how that's just how it is in New York. We're not mean, we're not rude, we're not nasty, but we're just New Yorkers. One of the questions asks, what are the traffic safety concerns? Pick a point, stand here, and see. It's difficult to move around the city with a vehicle. I'm thinking about leaving the city. 
City planners will use the information for future projects along Canal Street and in Lower Manhattan. They're asking about how we move around the area, including specifically about bikes. Everybody can sound off, residents of the blocks and visitors. What is it about Canal Street? It's an intersection of a whole bunch of different everything, whether it's food, people, culture. How many times have you seen sidewalks like this, slick, icy, slushy, or crosswalk entrances like this, filled with a pool of dark, slushy muck? They're not just annoying, they pose a real health risk as a woman who had to rely on someone else to help her navigate this sidewalk pointed out. You know, you could get hurt, you know? Especially us, older people. It's even worse if you're disabled. Try navigating this using a cane. The city required sidewalks and crosswalks to be cleared by one o'clock this afternoon. But this is one of the worst offenders, the unplowed, unshoveled plaza outside the 72nd Street subway stop for the one, two, and three trains. That's where Suzanne Hebron navigated every step. I said, I can't fall, I can't fall. I had a hip replacement, now I'm recovering. We asked this sanitation department shoveling crew nearby. You see, that's not ours. Not ours, ours is of crosswalks, fire hydrants, and bus stops. That's us. The MTA says this is a park, so it's the parks department's job to clear this out, but the MTA still sent out a crew to clear the plaza. And there was this. A man almost hits a woman accidentally as both slip, trying to navigate a slick stretch of sidewalk. That was in front of a business that we made aware of the problem. Minutes later, they sent out an associate to shovel. Overall, the worst that we saw today were sidewalks and crosswalks that the city's responsible to clear. There was no shoveling here on 161st Street on the sidewalk along one of the busiest routes in the Bronx until we alerted the Parks Department that this location, Railroad Park, had been neglected. It was a caravan, it was a parade to, to, to come help and make a statement. This has been a tough couple of days. I just had this crazy idea that Let's, let's do this. That's my house right next door. All that stuff, plus next door. And we're not finished. There was no central distribution point. I just became the central distribution point. It pretty much it destroyed our home. This is Andrew, he's got the house in the corner. All the bleach? Bring yeah, as much bleach of the bleach as possible. We wanted to make an impact to a couple streets today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's how fast it came in? It's about a foot high into our uh, dining room and kitchen. Our so, entire shed got swept away with everything in yeah. it. Custom built shed he built like 25, 40 feet. The loss is I've never experienced something this great before. And I've been here on this block for 30 years. Food, dry goods, non-perishables. We had clothing sorted. Gives us hope that, um, you know, with the help of our community and our neighbors and our family and our friends that, you know, we're gonna, you know, pull through this. Oh, we need that supplies? Yeah. Cleaning? We have, you need sprayer? If you could put that right there, that'll be... So we have sprayers, we have bleach. What we need is just to get our house, you know, back in order to take the next step. And he said, we're going to be here. Dropped off half and half to two of the most impacted streets in town. It, it's overwhelming. So heartfelt that the community is coming. Um, again, born and raised here, I know what everybody's made out of. Run up the street, both sides, see if anyone needs yeah. shot backs. We yeah. also brought a couple new fans that we picked up this morning. When you see the amount of damage done, you realize there's no way you can do this by yourself. Never expected it, but it's wonderful. Here, take these as people need. Thank you. It truly means a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I never imagined that two years later I'd still be doing them. People still need the messages. It's got a little system now at this point. Get the paint markers, make the outline. I have a few hundred sayings here that I rotate, put little stickers on them with more hearts, cut them out, and then they're ready to go. When I started, I was working as a bartender. 
they closed everything down right before St. Patrick's Day. The streets were, were empty. You would hear the sirens all over, and it was just a very sad time. I was trying to think of what I could do to make the neighborhood look a little better, and it just came to me like, oh, I'll put hearts up with little sayings of hope and inspiration. Holds me say there's going to be more things to look forward to and that this too shall pass. People call me the heart lady, so. <laughs> love is in our hearts. I love it. It's so nice. Really is. This is what we need. This is exactly what we need in the city and the world today. A lot of people need hope. My name is Elizabeth Savage, and this is called Hearts and Why. That one that you see on that cross street was almost meant for you that day. Well, lock your eyes on it because, you know, it will stand out. So everyone's so busy, and then it's just like, oh, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> I. Can't be that hard on myself. That's or, right. You know, okay. It's really inspiring. It brightens my day. Yes, it sure does. Absolutely. When they see it, they smile, they feel better, and hopefully they'll pass along that good vibe. Not just my day, but then it makes me want to brighten other days. I take photos of them, so if I'm, you know, needing a little pick-me-up or anything, I can kind of go through my phone. People come up to me in tears saying like, oh my God, I was at my worst and this helped me get through. Oh, you want to do a selfie? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's nice. great. I was actually inside a store and I seen her putting the heart. I'm like, oh, I see her in person. Let me run outside and say hi to her. I've been noticing these for quite some time and I started following her on Instagram. When I first started, I didn't have Instagram. I didn't really know about it. Once I did that, it just kind of blew up. It means somebody cares. I just put hearts up with different messages. It makes you feel good inside. My goal is to brighten someone's day, even if it's just for a minute. Maybe I'll be kinder today. Maybe I'll be gentle with myself today. Maybe I'll smile, because maybe I didn't all day. I've put up over 15,000 hearts from Harlem to the South Ferry. A lot of love, less hate, more peace. Love makes the world go round. With my husband's encouragement, he got me to sign up and start art school. Try and expand my artistic talents, if there are any. People need to be a little more kinder, and that kindness does matter. Came out to applaud it at, at seven. heard the music. Looking around, Why see what's going on. We wondered where it was coming from. It actually brought a tear to my eye. It took us a couple days to find it. Look up and there's an awesome neighbor who lives on the fourth floor with a huge speaker, just blasting music and everyone on the street dancing. Jump around. Jump around. The first one that I saw was her with the dog right there, walking for two, three days. A lot of people started to come. This is what we call 38th Street Rock. It's amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I work in nightlife, that's why I have a couple speakers in my house. It's a nice way to feel together in a time where we all feel so isolated. Bringing people together but trying to have six feet. I have an alarm set for every day at 640. It gets like nobody's watching. It's really nice to actually chat with your neighbors face to face, or as much of your face as you can. We've met more neighbors now that we're in quarantine than we did when we weren't. You know you make me wanna The controversy. There was one neighbor complaining. 50 people out there, many without masks on. It's unfortunate that someone can see a negative in something that's so positive for everyone else. This is possible, gonna go away. Cops can many times. There's a threat of a thousand dollar fine per day that he does this. To honor the healthcare workers, or are we endangering the healthcare workers? It's up to you. We're not the anti-social distancing club. We are certainly just people that want to get together for 20 minutes, dance and jump around, and go back to our homes a little bit happier than we were. We're living in sad moments, so music is happening. New York is the best, best city in the world.